Let me get everything set up here again. Perfect. Now's your chance. Uh, put all of your questions for Anne in that chat box. I'm just going to enlarge it so I can see everything here. And I'll read them out for the purposes of the recording and for people who can't see the chat box. I'll read them and then give Anne a chance to respond. While you're all pondering your questions, I'll also share this survey that Carol Chubb and I put together. Just pop that in. And you're all welcome to, let me just make sure it works here. Yes, you're all welcome to fill that out. It's very, very short. Excellent. I did have a very brief uh, panic attack during your presentation and because I got kicked out of the Zoom. <laughs> yeah. And I and I disappeared and I was like, my computer restarted. And I was like, oh no, this had better be, this had better not take too long. Yeah, that was wow. that. <laughs> you kept going. As soon as I was back in the Zoom room, I was like, oh, good. She kept going. <laughs> I can catch up. Oh, I have the wrong link for the survey. Okay, I'm gonna locate that and keep one eye on any questions coming. There we go. Okay. Here, perfect. Lots of questions coming in. Okay. Anne, I loved your presentation. I have a question about GHG emissions associated with SMRs. Does the fuel enrichment process not generate large GHG emissions? So SMRs are not really clean at all. Uh, interesting question. Um, I'm, I'm not sure, to tell you the truth, how, uh, how much energy that process takes, nor do I know just what technology they would be using in the reprocessing, um, but I think that's an interesting question to be pursued. I'm sorry, I can't give you a, an answer. But I'm assuming that there would be significant energy use, which has to come from somewhere. Excellent. Uh, this next one has a laughing face emoji following it. Wild Matriarch is an interesting name for an SMR company. Have you any more info about that? <laughs> uh, um, you can just look at the websites of any of these companies and they'll be uh, happy to give you lots of information. This is where I get the information about their products from their own websites. So just Google right. the names of the companies. Right up front. Um, okay. Next question. Do you think it is worthwhile to participate in SAS Power public consultations to raise concerns about SMRs and suggest other ways to address GHG emissions? Yes, indeed. I, I, I believe in talking to everybody. I, I know some people sort of take the attitude that uh, it's not worth talking to people that you think you disagree with. But I'm all in favor of talking to everybody who will listen. And, um, you know, we have already participated in one of the uh, consultation meetings. And um, I think it was I think it was an interesting process. And I think they heard some really strong messages. 
So sure, go ahead and participate. Uh, okay. Is there increased danger from terrorist attacks for SMNRs compared to other kinds of electrical generation? Oh, um, well, a terrorist's interest in uh, uh, any kind of a, a nuclear installation uh, might be to gain access to the uh, reactor fuel. Uh, I mean, one form of terrorism is obviously, yes, just destroying the electricity generation capacity. Uh, but also there is the factor of having um, materials and particularly with those that are using those highly enriched materials or plutonium fuels, um, uh, any attempt to uh, access that fuel uh, would be a very dangerous situation. All right. How is nuclear waste currently managed in Canada? Mm -hmm. uh, at present, the nuclear waste generated by our county reactors is initially stored underwater in uh, sort of like big swimming pools. Um, and the water, the deep water, um, provides a good deal of protection from the radiation. Uh, after some time, the, um, the fuel bundles can be removed from the water and temporarily stored in concrete silos. So this all takes place at the reactor site. So if we ended up with, you know, say the uh, Hitachi model here, we would doubtless have to be providing that kind of on-site uh, temporary storage. And meanwhile, everybody is just waiting for some kind of long-term storage or disposal facility to be developed. And it's interesting that, you know, the world has been working on this problem, I would say ever since 1955. And um, there is still nowhere, at least nowhere in North America or, or South America or Europe, uh, a facility which is accommodating uh, permanent disposal of nuclear waste. Uh, for everyone asking in the chat about the survey and the password, I sent the wrong link. If you scroll down, there's a new link and it should work now. Quick survey. Uh, next question. Can you give us an approximate idea of the current nuclear energy cost per watt, as well as the other clean energy, such as solar, wind, hydro? How are those compared to the traditional power generating costs? Oh boy, uh, I I don't have those <laughs> I don't have those numbers uh, on hand. But um, the interesting thing is the rapidity with which the cost of solar energy and wind energy is coming down. So that in uh, uh, many studies are indicating that. Um, the renewable energies are actually now cheaper than any of the alternatives. Um, but as I say, I, I don't want to try and start quoting figures. There may be somebody else on the call who has those figures handy. And um, if, if, uh, if they do, uh, I would welcome you to share that. OK. Uh... I know all the financing is pie in the sky, RE, a cost of one 300 megawatt reactor. Any guess per build? And second part, how much greenhouse gas would be produced just building one? 
Again, uh, I'm sorry, I can't give you the numbers. A little, yeah. One bit of chatter that I've heard links SMRs to production of green hydrogen. The theory is that cold electrolysis from wind uh, is expensive and SMRs can provide inexpensive heat. You heard any chatter? <laughs> um, there are, are different ways of um, producing hydrogen, green hydrogen, and uh, if you do it by electrolysis of water, you could do that with solar electricity, which is going to be cheaper than nuclear electricity. Um, yeah, I think that's. Trying to look at the uh, the chat column. Oh, it's filled up fast. Okay. <laughs> Next question. You referred vaguely to the length of time that it would take to build the first SMR. Um, and at the sales session, this person notes that the salespeople said with great confidence that there would be an SMR up and running by 2030. What do you think of that? timeline. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's really hard to tell what they will discover when they build the prototype. Um, you know, whether, uh, whether they have to do a lot more redesign uh, as they try out the prototype. Um, you know, I, I find 2030 being a rather unrealistic date uh, to actually see a commercial scale reactor in place. Um, as I say, we, we have to go through a lot of uh, research development, redesign of our regulatory system, uh, finding the money from somewhere uh, to make this all happen. So uh, <laughs> the date, I mean, nuclear reactors generally have taken longer to build than their original estimates, sometimes much longer. They, they tend to go over budget and uh, arrive later than they're anticipated. Um, and I'm not sure that the small reactors will be any different in that sense. So I would not bank on 2030. Okay. Uh, Anne, you predict that other options will take over the market. That is already happening on a larger scale in other jurisdictions, but the SAS government has a predilection for subsidizing ostensibly novel big tech. Uh, so is the market enough to get those other options in place, even though they are likely to be an, or, be an order of magnitude cheaper than SMN numbers? Well, <laughs> I mean, the nice thing about wind power and solar is that you don't have to have a big market. You know, you can put up <laughs> one solar panel and it starts producing energy. Uh, now, obviously, the bigger the unit, the, the cheaper the uh, unit cost becomes. But it's not a case of you need uh, a huge market for solar power. I mean, we already know how to make solar panels and they've been getting more and more efficient and we know how to build wind turbines. Um, so uh, I think the issue of 
upbeat market is is really not relevant to those renewable forums. Okay, there's lots lots of comments in the chat. Remember that if you are wanting other people to see your comments, uh, to add to the discussion, you'll have to toggle between your two drop down from two all panelists to two all panelists and attendees. Um, okay, another question. We've got about 10 more minutes before we wrap it up. Um, so we have enough time for a couple more questions. Uh, cooling of nuclear rods seems to be critical to prevent nuclear disasters resulting from overheating. Water cooling of the swimming pools must be critical. How does climate change impact the reliability of those cooling systems? Hmm. <laughs> well, um, the cooling, I, I think you're talking about the storage of the used fuel rods uh, after they've been removed from the reactor uh, that are cooled in uh, a swimming pool, we call it an indoor swimming pool. Uh, it, it's, not, it's not open to the air. Um, so uh, I don't think that those swimming pools are going to become sufficiently overheated that uh, it would become risky. Um, they, uh, you know, the, the fission products are continuing to generate heat. And uh, I'm sure that fresh cold water is being circulated through the swimming pools. So I, I don't think there would be an overheating problem associated with that temporary storage system. Lots of commentary. Oh, I'm always impressed with the level of intelligent people with insightful questions that come to this program. Um, I'm going to leave the chat. The chat will remain open. So if you want to talk to each other some more, um, double check to make sure that your comments are going to all attendees and then we can share research, etc. cetera. Uh, while that's happening, uh, Katya, is there any other news from the SES side of things that we need to share? Well, I just wanted to mention that uh, this is uh, our uh, last session before summer break. And uh, there definitely will be more sessions uh, starting in September. Uh, but we haven't confirmed the uh, title of September presentation yet and the date. So, but we are working on this. We just had a meeting yesterday. <laughs> it's so, yes, I guess you guys always can check it in a library program guide. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there will be some information on Facebook, of course, on SES website and uh, in the um, Planet S magazine. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's a great resource. Um, this recording of this presentation, uh, I'll edit it up and in hopefully about a week is my turnaround.